Okay, so again, happy new year. Um, welcome to a brand new year. And um, if you're Haitian, if you're on this call, whether you're Haitian or not, happy Independence Day. I hope you've had the soup, or maybe you know someone who made it. Um, so this is part of the Haiti Decoded Discover Haiti series that we're going to be doing some online teachings that are absolutely free throughout the year. And it will be you know, great to start it with the history of the soup jumu, our beloved tradition. So my name is Maudlin Maxineau Gideon. I am, just a quick bit about me. I'm a mom of two boys, wife, I'm a college administrator, instructor, I'm a social worker and an entrepreneur, founder of Haiti Decoded and co-founder of Haitian Bells. Um, I, I think I'll skip that part. <laughs> I, I wanted my audience to kind of tell me a bit about themselves. Um, just if you have children, what do you do? And so that way I can tell you tailor the information to make it a lot more relevant based on you know who's present. But we can maybe backtrack to that. So today the goal is to share with you the two historical versions of the soup. So you know our history is oral, largely oral. So there are various versions of it, but it's condensed down to two to these two versions that are that's, that have more truth and facts to them. Um, the mission and important work of Empress Marie Claire Eris Fugtite Bonheur de Saline. <laughs> I'll get to her. Um, the importance of keeping this tradition alive and supporting the work of this wonderful woman named Marie Claire Eris Bonheur Fugtite de Saline. So that's the task today. That's our agenda. So there are two versions of this soup, right? Uh, I just mentioned that our history is largely writ or, or oral and what's written or what's uh, heavily documented was not done by us, right? It was really our enemies or, you know, the French and the people that we defeated. So they're not going to write um, an accurate history uh, that puts you and, and, and that makes you what? The hero of your own story. Sometimes they tell it and they omit things uh, to kind of like, you know, leave out information that if you know would really help you to understand your history and your ancestors a lot better and would make a difference in your character and who you are. So much of our history is old and it's largely an African you know, thing where you sit to tell the younger generation the story because that's where you pass down the intentions, the feelings. Versus in a textbook, um, you don't always you know, have you know, that sentiment, that value is not always passed down. So when you tell it orally, um, you get the expressions, you get to ask questions, you get to be part of the story. So the oldest version that I grew up with uh, that many of us might know is the on the plantation, right? So it's it's um, time during the time of slavery and France is our, um, Saint-Domingue, which is present day Haiti, is the colony of France. So the French enslavers restricted what the enslaved Africans ate. So they could not eat certain parts of meat. Uh, they could not eat um, certain fruits and vegetables. And we can see that today because um, in Jamaica or over at Jamaica, um, the British slave masters only allowed the enslaved to eat the ox, the, the, the ox tail, the part of the uh, beef uh, tail. And they turn around and made it like a, a really good delicacy. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's something that is meant to hurt you or to keep you from experiencing something greater, but you take that and you make it into something, you know, I know we all love ox tail, right? But there's a history there as well. So these enslaved people could not enjoy the luxuries and, you know, because they were enslaved. Um, so in particular, they could not eat certain fruits and vegetables. So that's the oldest version. And I'm going to go deep into it. Then I'll come back to the newer version. So the Haitian squash or the pumpkin is a difficult fruit to grow. It's even harder to cultivate. Um, the French would make the enslaved do all the work, right? Well, it, plant it, cultivate it. Uh, look after it, making sure you know when it's right, when to take it out, how to cut it. It's, everything is so precise. But they were forbidden from eating it, along with many other fruits. So the enslaved could only eat what 
the French masters or the slave masters did not want in a sense. So the story is that when the country was officially freed um, on January 1st, 1804, the formerly enslaved wanted to do everything that they were denied before, right? You couldn't do this, well, now I wanna do it. You couldn't do that, well, now I wanna do this. I wanna eat this uh, fruit that I was denied for so long. But with this version, there are holes in it, right? Um, what we're talking about is a puree. The French did not call it a soup, it was a puree. So it's, it's, there are holes in the story. So if the puree is just boiling the pumpkin or the squash and mashing it, maybe you add some, maybe you add some salt and some seasoning, and and by itself like that, it's, it's pretty good. Um, but our soup is not like that. Our version is not like that. Our version is not a puree. So who came up with the recipe? So now we go back to. Um, we go back. <laughs> we go back to the relatively newer version right here where we learn about Marie-Claire Ewers, Félicité Bonheur de Saline, the wife of Jean-Jacques de Saline. So this story came to light through Professor Baina Bello and her team. So she understands having, you know, having been traveling all over the continent of Africa, lived in the US, she's my teacher. So I know <laughs> a bit about her. Um, she understands that our history is largely written and sometimes fabricated. In the late 80s, she and a team set to talk to Hades cent centenarians, the people who are well over 100. One of them passed away uh, earlier this year. She was a professor. She died at one, 105. So we have these people that, that live well beyond um, 100 years old, so 120. I think the oldest person right now in Haiti is probably 127, 130, closer to 30. So they do live, but they live the simple life. They live in the mountains. They live um, more, more or less, they don't interact with the larger population. They feed off the land. So they, their lifespan is a lot longer than people who live in the city. So they know a lot of the history because it was told to them. So they had four, their grandparents sat them down and explained our stories to them. So she and her team interviewed these people. There were a large number of them or a larger group of them in the late eighties. And that's where we learned the missing story of Subjumu, like who actually came up with the recipe. So we're going to go now to Marie-Claire Ewers and what she did. So, it's November, 1803, the last battle of Vettier. Everyone knows that we're going to win because the way the French are dying, it's just not, they, they, they're not gonna recover. So everyone was making preparations, right? The Saline was probably doing something else. Uh, Christophe was probably doing something else. His wife was, everyone was making preparations. Everyone was doing things that they knew they were forbidden to do before. What is the new nation going to be like? You know, what what are morals or values? There was a lot of decision, a lot of talking because we're we're getting ready to declare our independence. So after the Battle of Vetier, November 18, 1803, it was done. So we had two months. Then the official notice came on January 1st, 1804. But after that battle, the French were just getting ready to pull out. And the last troop or the last uh, group of people that this thing did allow them to pull to pull out um they did so before the the um the new year so we can officially proclaim ourselves as free and no longer under french rule on january 1st so everybody had, had their roles to play but marie claire Igors, wife of general jean-jacques de saline she was a healer an herbalist teacher humanitarian long before she met Dessaline and long before independence. And she prioritized nutrition. That was her thing. She was a healer. She was a self-taught nurse. And she knew, and she had been studying herbs for a while. She was fortunate that her, she, her family afforded, uh, I'll go into her life um, much later on, but she had a vast knowledge of herbs and uh, vegetation. And she knew that the squash had many benefits. And she wanted to give the people a medicine as the years to come were uncertain, right? So we declare our independence, but what if France comes back? 
what if you have to go back to hide in the mountains again? So her main concern, um, her main concerns were health and um, education. So being that that's the person she was, she came up with the recipe for soup jumu for health reasons, as well as to celebrate. So the soup is to be used as medicine because of all the vital enzymes and nutrition and all the you know elements that that contains in the squash and all these vegetables and it's also meant to share so on independence day if you make the soup and you only keep it to yourself <laughs> and you put meat in it it's not that traditional soup right it's really you're just making the soup you have to share it in order for it to be considered independent soup so again according to professor bello the original version was vegan. It had no meat, no pasta. So it was largely vegetables like cabbage, carrots, potatoes, um, I, I left out leeks, and herbs like parsley and, th and, and, and thyme, right? So this, <laughs> this puree of just vegetables and, and the pumpkin soup was supposed to fortify the people that had been fighting in the mountains. It was mostly a guerrilla war. They were fighting in the mountains. They were malnourished half the time that they were fighting these, these French people. So Marie Claire Lewis officially became empress when Dessalines created the first, the Black Empire of Haiti in October 1804 and called for people to share the soup with each other. The thing that I learned from Professor Bell that I did not know at all was that you're supposed to consume this for seven days. So January 1st, all the way to January 7th. That's what you're supposed to eat in order for you to really use this as a medicine. It's not a one-time thing. But today, you know, tr tr um, traditions do evolve, right? So that's the story of our Empress. We call her Empress Felicite for short. So who was she? She was born on May 8, May 8 1748 in Leogane, Saint-Domingue. She was born into slavery. She was a one of those people that lived beyond 100. She lived to be 110 years old. She outlived this selling by 52 years. Um, her, mat her maternal aunt was a governess and she taught her how to read, write. And so she had access to, um, uh, she, was, she was a very privileged slave. Um, she had access to some books and her knowledge of herbs, like I mentioned before, was vast. And she was a self-taught nurse, a midwife and healer. So her contribution to our heritage and our tradition is just un in in incalculable. What she gave us, because if you're and if you're part of the diaspora, you don't live in Haiti, um, you 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 remember that tradition. It's it's your chance to connect um, with those everywhere. Those who are living in Canada, those who are living in Europe, those who are in Haiti themselves. It's your chance to connect with them because we're all eating some version of this soup and likely discussing the history. So keeping, so what she has done for us is just um, amazing for our culture and our heritage. And speaking of culture and heritage, um, I would like to segue into what the soup means overall, right? Um, I borrowed this quote from um, this professor, your culture is your medicine. And I think she knew that. So the idea behind this comforting, savory dish is to make it and share it with others. Again, you have to share it. So I recently moved to Long Island. I'm from New York. And my, I, I don't have a lot of people from my background around me. And so last year, we made the soup. And you know, we just moved there. And I didn't want to share. <laughs> But this year, or, 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 or in 2021, I didn't want to share. 2022, we made an effort to get to know our neighbors a lot, a lot better, more than just, you know, hi, hi. Um, you know, hey, I'm from this area, I moved here, and this and this. And just telling them about my background. And I'm like, I'm a book author, I write about my history, and this and that. And they're like, oh, that sounds, that sounds fantastic. You should give us some soup. <laughs> So, so, so this year, I feel last year, I feel like, you know, it wasn't independent soup, but this year it is because you're sh I'm sharing it and I'm sharing my history and culture with people who are not from my background. So the point is to share. While sharing, we share our ancestry story. So 
while you're having this super discussing, you know, things about your history, whether it doesn't have to be Haitian history, it could be African American history, it could be any uh, or family history, right? Or maybe uh, you're talking about, you know, I didn't know my great aunt did this or did that. It's just a day for you to connect and really share stories and just, you know, be in a moment with each other. And also January 2nd, the next day is Ancestors Day in Haiti. So it was befitting that you, 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 you consume this soup for seven days because you're continually sharing and, and, and really taking in an, an information and learning about, you know, the elders. So I think all of that is just tremendous for a culture. Um, and it just so happened that in late 2021, the soup general was inducted <laughs> into the list of intangible cultural heritage. So even the world understands, you know, the importance of the tradition that Marie Claire Ehlers, Felicite Bonheur de Saline, gave us um, long, long ago. So who is this Professor Bello that I'm talking about? She is my queen. I love her so much. Um, she teaches from, it's just like she lived this history already. So she is um, a master teacher. Uh, she coins the term our stories or our, our um, history. She is a co the, the co-founder of um, Fondation Felicite, named for or to serve the mission, to carry out the missions of Empress Felicite. So we all call her, she has students globally, um, Mama Bello or Baina Bello. And she is a grandmother, a great grandmother. She's an expert in Haitian and African history. She founded the, the uh, um, found, she is, she founded Fondation Felicite in 1999. Like I said, she interviewed these, you know, older people, older um, people who lived in the mountains throughout the entire country in the late 80s. And by the late 90s, she had the foundation um, to research Haitian history and promote health, consciousness issues, and, and consciousness issues that were important to the Empress and this elite. Again, she's a master teacher. She, she hosts these monthly virtual um, conversations. She hasn't had them in, in, in a few um, months because of, um, I think, internet instability, um, uh, things happening in Haiti. But I, I'm hoping she'll res uh, um, resume this year and, and quickly because we really need to learn, continue to learn from her. So if you want to support or look into this, um, you can just Google or type in fondationfelicite.com. You can hit the translate button. It's in, it's in English and French. Um, and you can look into it and support the foundation. So who do we have in the audience? I, I feel like doing a pop quiz. Who do we have, Paul? We have myself and Camilo. Okay. So I don't know um, if Camilo was listening or, <laughs> or should I just maybe continue? Um, because if it's just one person, maybe, because um, I, I want it to be a competition because I want to give this mug away. Um, so <laughs> that, um, that would have been something. But anyway, so I'll continue. So maybe we can um, come back to that. Okay. So I write children's books. Um, I, 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 um, I find that it's easier to connect and talk to the younger folks in our community uh, because they haven't, because many of us have to unlearn to relearn, right? And the, the folks who are four to 12, <laughs> they're learning right now. So there's no relearning or there's no misconception that you have to challenge and find. So I write books. Um, about these topics to, uh, um, for kids four to 12. And so my book, Independence Soup Shumu, just follows a curious eight-year-old um, and she learns about the Saline and the revolution and, the, and it all takes place in the countryside. So that's what I do um, as a contributor to our history and our stories. Um, you can sign up for um, free online teachings, uh, my weekly newsletter, um, events that are happening in person, and new book releases that are coming this year. By just if you um, take your phone and um, just click the QR code, it would take you to 
uh, my mailing list or my website and you can see you know what I'm up to make sure you sign up for the mailing list that way you get up-to-date information um, about what what I'm doing I also have another platform I mentioned Haitian Bells so more of our events in person events um, and we're going to be launching um, more events and um, content throughout that platform Haitian Bells so another way to find me is um, by, oh, okay, it's there. Another way to find me is um, through live events that, that, that I'm not doing myself. So on Saturday, February 4th, um, I'm going to be with these wonderful professors, um, Dr. Susan Tata, I've met Dr. Professor James Smalls and Professor Baina Bello are, are really my mentors, but all these people here are just wonderful, excellent, Black history teachers and professors, and um, they will be there. We will be at the Jamaica Performance, Performing Arts Center in Queens. And uh, the theme is um, Black Excellence. So happy is this movement that, um, that is, is in our community and they make uh, films and documentaries and they have um, regional, national, and even global conferences. Um, they were in Egypt a few, a few months ago. So um, you'll find me there um, on Saturday, February 4th. And um, that'll be one, my first um, in-person event in the new year. So for more information, go to Happy Film and get your ticket. It's on Eventbrite also, and it's very reasonable. I think it's about $30 or $40 um, just to hear these wonderful professors and um, connect with people in our community. Um, it's a seven hour event, so, so you can plan, you know, come after work, come before, come for a few hours or come for the whole day. I'm sure there'll be plenty to do um, for seven hours. And um, that takes me to um, my handle, how to stay connect with me, connected with me and Haiti Decoded. And um, I'll end it there to see if there are any questions um, or if I could go back to um, here, to the pop quiz and see if at least Paul was listening. All right, so I'm gonna stop recording for now.